Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 251 of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. I'm Kier, your host. With me on the show today, my co-host, Emerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? This week, the team reviews The Godfather. Um, but before we get to that, check out my graphic novel. The ebook is now available for $2.99. Um, noticing some more sales there. So I appreciate the support. Um, here's a synopsis. Widely regarded as one of the greatest films of all time, this mob drama, based on Mario Puzo's novel of the same name, focuses on the powerful Italian-American crime family of Don Vito Corleone when the Don's youngest son, Michael, reluctantly joins the mafia. He becomes involved in the inevitable cycle of violence and betrayal. Although Michael tries to maintain a normal relationship with his wife, Kay, he is drawn deeper into the family business. That's an interesting synopsis because it's clearly been edited. Mm. It's, it starts out as saying one of the greatest films of all time. What was the original synopsis? Based off one of the greatest books of all time. Um, so here's our rating system. On the show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. What do you what, you want to go first, Emerson? Sure. So I'm going to give this movie a win. Um, I love the book, so I read I read and finished the book. Um, but well, when I was finishing the book, I was like, "How the fuck do you make this into a movie?" Because it's not only a significant length of time in the book that's passing. It's like a nine, long book. Nine or 10 years. Yeah. It's a long book on its own. It's got a significant length of time. It has a hundred characters. It's got all these different story arcs that are like somewhat connected. So I was like, okay, how are they going to do this? So this is definitely like, I see why people would say that this movie is better. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's better in the sense that like, yeah, I really hated that in the book. But if you're going to make a movie based off the book, this is one of the tightest, like, accurate stories I think you can make um, yeah. in terms I of, like... I think it does improve, too. And I'm assuming, because I want to talk to you about that, because I, I, I think that's probably in reference to what's not being shown. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so I'll talk to you about it. But it's definitely a win. Um, the book was amazing. The movie was awesome. So, yeah, it's a win. Ever it? Yeah, I'm going to give it a win as well. I'm probably going to go out on a limb and say this is probably a unanimous win from all three of us. Um, I, I, okay. <laughs> I, yeah, he's going to call uh, it a loss. You're going to call it a loss just to spite me. Um, I love the movie. I haven't seen the movie since ninth grade and rewatching it. I, I still love it. I didn't unfortunately get to finish the book. I got about halfway through it. A little, Maybe a little bit more than halfway. Yeah, I've heard that halfway line before. No, I, I got to the part. <laughs> um, we're in spoilers right now, right? uh we could talk spoilers yeah i got to the part in the book right before the real war breaks out like when they're uh when michael's trying to save his father in the hospital by moving him to the different room that's about to the part where i got in the book and up until then um i really enjoyed the book and i'm gonna finish it as i told emerson the other day um but from what i read i actually kind of prefer the book a little bit to the movie I, I love them both but the book in my and like I'm going off my personal opinion, like I do with a lot of stuff, it kind of provides those little moments of context that sort of explain to you, like why characters do what they do. And, you know, on some of the events kind of spells it out a little bit more for you. And I like that. And I have a couple examples of that as we go down the plot, but this movie's great. It's got great acting, great directing. The score is phenomenal. I think that tune that plays throughout the whole movie, like it's extremely iconic. Iconic. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, iconic would be a, a word to describe this entire whole thing. Like there's so many lines and scenes in this movie that are just so famous now. I used to like, be able insane. to play the theme on the piano. It's it's amazing, and I'm I excited forgot. to talk. I about lost it. my notes somewhere, but I used to be able to. We're um, we're doing the other two, right? Two and three. Well, we could talk about that, but um, <clears throat> my rating is obviously a win. Um, so since we're in spoilers, let's just talk about. Um, Damn, there's something Everett said. Okay, here's the thing. I think that the beginning is so good that it you actually it builds up some goodwill. So when it actually starts to go off the rails a little bit towards the end, you're you, talking about the book or the movie? I'm talking about both. Okay. But the book especially. Uh, you kind of like you've had that built up goodwill to where you're like, yeah, I'm still interested in this. But for example, in the book, 
I mean, this is this is not this is widely known. Like, this is a, a common opinion. All the all the shit about Lucy Mancini's vagina, like all of that, is trash. Like, it shouldn't exist. And the so, ever graphic you get sex to that scene. Part. No, you didn't even no, get it to that gets, part ever. But there's oh, like a you're significant not talking, you're, you're plot You're not talking point. about the one at the beginning? No, there's no. a significant plot point built around it. It has nothing to do with the greater story, but like you spend a while on it. Oh, the Jesus, beginning okay. is like, it's weird. He's introducing all these things and then he spends a long time talking about the size of her vagina. And I'm like, who cares? And I'm like, where's this going? And it's like, okay, her and Sonny have a relationship because of it. But... Later on, I mean, that whole thing, the whole thing with, with Nino and Johnny and Jules and Lucy, trash, all of it, just toss it right out. And the movie did. So, so that a, a large part of that, I think, is like, if the, mo- if the book started with that stuff, I would be like, I'm out. What the fuck is this? Like, this is terrible. Um, and I think most people agree. And that's why I think people say that the movie is better because it actually does cut out the worst parts of the book that should have yeah. never been there. And, and that's what I was going to talk about because Everett said that he kind of likes the book better because it adds context. And yeah, in the good scenes in the movie, the good scenes in the book, like there are a little more context. The conversations are a yeah. little more extended. You get a little more insight, but you can't do that in a movie. Like it's, it would be ridiculous. Um, See, so Everett yeah. never even heard the Luca Brasi story. That's true. Did you don't even know what he far? did. No. Remember at the wedding, he tells Kay, like, there's a story that nobody will tell him? Mm-hmm. You, the that's whole, later uh, in the I'll book. tell you when I'm 100 line. Yeah. He, uh, he threw a baby in a furnace. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> His own baby that he got from a prostitute, I think. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, hold on. Before we continue, can I ask you guys a question? Um, when I was in ninth grade and I first watched this film, my teacher told me that the guy that plays Luca Brasi in this movie is an actual mafioso. Is that true? I, I think he was like in the nightlife. No, 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 no. He's a, he's a professional wrestler. Oh, okay. Yeah, your teacher is crazy. Um, <laughs> no, but there are the guy that plays Johnny Fontaine. He got the role. Then he got replaced. Then the guy that got replaced went to the mafia and they did like a public media campaign to like scandalize the whole thing. And then the other guy that actually got the role was like, listen, I don't want to be like in trouble with the mob. And he backed out and the original guy got it, which is not unlike what happens in the film where they try to get him the role, which is not unlike who he's based on, Frank Sinatra. Yes. So Sinatra hates it because of that, by the way. He like he, is really he hates the about book. It. Yeah. He, he tried to be in the movie. Yeah, he was like considered for a role. I forget which one. So it's just one of those things. It's like, well, there's money to be made and fame. And like, so so Sinatra, I think the movie was called From Here Until Eternity, something like that. Do you guys know what movie I'm talking about? Uh, No, but it sounds somewhat familiar. Um, From where until eternity? I don't know. I've never seen it. From Here to Eternity. And that was like he was at the end of his career. Um, it's a, it's about three soldiers, Burt Lancaster, Montgomery Clift and Frank Sinatra stationed on Hawaii in the months before the infamous attack on Pearl Harbor and their intricate romantic predicaments. So did the, the, the modern one with Ben Affleck, did that try to like emulate that? Cause you remember that uh, there was like a whole yeah, love Michael Bay's movie? Pearl Harbor, the, uh, the yeah. Michael Bay version. So anyway, Frank Sinatra was, um, like his his career was like stagnating and that movie like reignited it. Mm. Um, so that's what happens with Johnny. I think like the whole Johnny thing is what they did in the movie is like they give you that scene where it's his manager, which you don't even really need, but it's like, I mean, it's iconic, like that scene with the horse's head. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I've seen that guys, imitated in so many things. Have you, did you ever see this original version of it? No, this is the first time I saw it, but like the first version of this I saw was in The Simpsons. Right. Yeah, I remember that too. Um, that's a real horse's head. It's real. Uh, really? Yeah. It's what from a dog fuck? food farm. The horse was going to be killed anyway. 
So they were just like, we want the head. But I, I guess he still received a ton of criticism for it. <laughs> um, for doing well, that. I, I guess they don't have the no animals were harmed during the making of this film thing at the end. I guess, yeah, they don't. Um, so, so Johnny Fontaine, like him being like, please, Godfather, help me. You get to see how, how Don Corleone works, how his influence works. After that, all you really need is for them to be like, hey, Johnny, we want you to come work the casino like five nights a month or something, whatever they say yeah. to him. Everything else that's in the book, just toss it out. Well, I kind of enjoyed like, so I agree with you that a lot of that shit in Vegas, not only is it weird, but it's also a whiplash because at like this point where all this crazy shit is happening in New York, it like Rhea said, oh, now we're in California with Johnny. But it was interesting when like when Jules like diagnoses his throat and like fixes it he's like i think something's wrong here and like it's not the same as the story but that was an interesting arc the problem is it's so tied into building a new vagina and like yeah well that's not exaggeration everett it's just i I don't doubt it because i'm like okay i want to tell a story about italian americans in like post-world war ii and and like the organized crime and all that then why go into all this la celebrity shit about how and that's did. that's the thing it, it it felt like effective world building kind of because there would be like little references to like things in the past and things in the future and then like it kind of ties in when the family decides they're going to move out to vegas and like well fredo's there and jules is there and Kay is it's there barely yeah johnny's kind of there but then then it, like i i was expecting there to be an act as i was reading it i was expecting something like there was going to be a big issue out west and like these characters we've been introduced to, we're going to be the ones who are going to have to solve it. Like what at I'm the saying, yeah. Direction. It it, it's just like it just like branches off. It's almost like George R. R. Martin's writing, like yeah. it branches off. And thankfully, Mario Puzio actually uh, finished the book. But like he did. But like this is what George R. R. Martin's trying to do is he's branched off, and now he's got to bring it back, and he can't do it. And that's why it's taking so long. But that's why you don't do stuff like that. You don't just like say, oh, I'm just going to go down this rabbit hole of like characters or whatever, even though it could lead to something cool. Like, I didn't hate those scenes, but having read the book before, I'll admit to you now, I, I skimmed through most of it. Like I oh, knew okay. that there was nothing of value that was like only until Michael shows up in Vegas that it actually like picks back up. Um, so um, let's talk a little bit about the casting. It, it was pretty interesting. Um, they offered Mario Puzo like twelve thousand dollars plus eighty thousand if the movie, if the book became a movie, and his agent told him not to take it. He's like, you can get way more, but I guess he had gambling debts and he needed ten thousand dollars right away, so he took the deal with Paramount. Um, <clears throat> they didn't want Marlon Brando because Marlon Brando had a reputation for being insane on set and like difficult to work with and all that. Um, so they did like some weird screen tests. Marlon Brando's face doesn't look like that. Did you guys know that? He has like cotton balls in his cheeks or something, right? He did that for the audition, but he actually got a prosthetic made because he wanted to look like a bulldog. Oh. I'm like, why? Why? (laughs) Why does he have to look like a bulldog? He's insane. It's so weird because he's such a like dapper and like polite and respectable man. Like, why do you want him to look like a bulldog? It doesn't make sense. Um, So that was weird. Um, so they have him with the cotton balls and I guess they liked his audition. So they picked him, um, Al Pacino. Did you guys notice that was Al Pacino? Yes. He looks a lot different when he's younger. Yeah. Yeah. He looks like super different. It's obscene actually. Especially Especially if you like, you contrast it to the, what's that movie we watched? The Uh, Irishman. No, not the Irishman. The other one, uh, the one about the FBI training. Oh, Uh, the recruit. Yeah, if you if you compare it to the recruit, it's, it's extremely different. Yeah, um, so he they, he was in another movie, and Robert De Niro got cast as Polly Gatto, the guy who uh, betrays the Godfather yeah. and gets killed in the car. Mm-hmm. Um, but then then uh, Al Pacino dropped out of that movie to be in this one, and Robert De Niro was cast as. He replaced Al Pacino. Then they tried to get Robert De Niro to be Sonny. And, um, but then he dropped out of that as well. Have you guys seen part two? No. Okay. Um, so 
Do you guys know James Khan? You know that's like Elf's dad. Yeah, okay. You remember Elf ever? Did you ever see Elf? Like uh like what's an uh, John Favreau's Elf? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. His dad. That's his dad. That's Sonny Corleone. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that, but that's interesting. You, I don't remember if you got this far in Sopranos. But I got pretty far in Sopranos. I'm almost at the end. Don't say almost if you're not going to finish it. I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to finish it. I'm like, I'm halfway through see, like season oh, six. Oh, halfway. He's halfway, guys. <laughs> half- That's how you okay, know well, he's okay. lying. <laughs> I'm not lying. I've, I've told, I've talked to you about the episodes that I've gotten Did you to. finish Kia's book yet? I don't even have Kia's book in my room. My dad still has it. <laughs> oh. It's down the hall. He's like, it's impossible. Nothing can be done. Okay, get to the point. What, like, what part of Sopranos did I not get to? Is your dad halfway? My dad's been reading it when he gets the chance, but okay, he's, li- yeah. he's liking it, I guess, from what he tells me. All right. I mean, all right. I haven't had a bad review from anyone who's actually read it. I mean, I haven't had a bad review, but like, people just haven't read it. That's and to me, that's a bad review. But um, anyway, what the hell were we saying? You were saying something about uh, the Sopranos. I oh, you don't know if I got to this part in the Sopranos. There's a part in the Sopranos where they're dealing with like Native Americans, and they're going oh. to the casino and they're trying to extort the Native Americans, and they they find out like the the chief is like not really, um, I don't know. He's like Native American adjacent. He's not not like a true tribes member, and so they try to extort him, and they come back and. And it's like a famous guy or something. And Silvio's like, yeah, they don't care that they don't care if we out him. They're like, it's not, it's an open secret. It's like knowing James Conn isn't really Italian because James. I, yeah, Conn, no, I, I got to that part. They do like yeah. a whole campaign. Like they have posters and stuff up. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So like that's in the, there's actually Godfather is littered. I'm sorry. Sopranos is littered with Godfather references. And you think that's why the show is so interesting because you think that it's like, oh, this is the modern Godfather. It's like, no. These guys are quoting Godfather in the show. I don't know if you guys like caught on to that part. There's one part where, and, and this will have you, you guys haven't seen two and three, right? Yeah, I asked you that, I think. No, no. I haven't seen two. No and three. context to it at all. None. Okay, but you both watch the episode and they don't even talk, they don't say Godfather. But remember when Father Phil and Carmela are like watching movies? Yes. And he's like, so uh, what does Tony think is better, one or two? He doesn't say Godfather because that's how people talk like when they're that big of fans, like one or two. This is a, these are huge movies, um, not just for, for mafia people, but like in, in America. So, and she goes, oh, I think Tony prefers two or something like that. I, f- I forget what she says, but she goes, and then three was like, what happened? Because that is literally like, it's like, it's like the hive mind, like meme shit you see on Reddit, like the overall consensus is like one and two. And then there's three and like, what the fuck happened there? A lot of people say two is better than one, which I would like. I I wasn't sure if you guys were going to like it. So I was like, if you guys want to watch two, I would say we should watch two and three. Well, I I guess I have that context of it. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much established that one is good. Two is better. And three is pretty bad. Yeah. But the thing is two doesn't have Don Vito as Marlon with Marlon Brando because he's dead. Yeah. So, there wasn't a book for Godfather 2, was there? I look, there's something called The Sicilian, and it's not based around like Michael Corleone's in it, but it's he's not the main character. Is the and Sicilian it, based off Salazzo? Salazzo? No, he was he was the Turk. But didn't they call him the Sicilian at one point? They said he was a Sicilian as like a he's got balls. He's a true type thing. Sicilian. Yeah. But yeah, it wasn't him. And then there was also there's something called The Last Dawn and Omerta. And I'm not really none of them are like true. Like God, it's not, there's not even supposed to be sequels to this. Francis Ford Coppola, like, didn't want to do it, but he did the second one, I think. Um, And then I think his daughter or somebody did the third one. Um, Okay. (laughs) His daughter was in this movie, right? Like, she was the wife that got married. No, that's his sister. Oh, that's his sister. Never mind. uh, His sister is, yeah, we were talking about the cast. His sister is Adrian from the Rocky movies. Adrian. Yeah. Um. Uh, so we got James Conn, we got Al Pacino, we got Marlon Brando. Um, Luca Brasi was a W, not, not a WWE. He was just a professional wrestler. I don't know from where. Um, 
Who else? Robert Duvall's Tom Hagen. Robert Duvall, who's actually older than Sonny in the movie. Dude, I think Tom Hagen's my favorite character in the entire movie and book. I love him. I, I like him I, too. I feel so bad for him. Why? Like, I mean, like all the shit that happens to him, he's like an errand boy almost. I know he's the consigliere, but like. No, he's kind of like, he gets off pretty well. Like his he family gets, doesn't get But he murdered. gets like, he gets being, he gets kicked out of his job at the end. Yeah, but then he kind of like he's no, he still it up back. there. Yeah, he gets it Does back he? by the end. It, it was in all the book, a ploy. Yeah. It was a ploy to get him out, like to not be involved in their big plan. Oh, but I afterwards, that, I guess because it it happens. Well, this is in the book. This isn't explained in the movie. Yeah, in the movie, but it things come to a head faster than expected, and Tom has to be like put back into the position because the Don mm-hmm. dies. Yeah. Um. So they, they originally didn't want Al Pacino because he was too short. So Emerson, ha- having not seen the movie before, right? You didn't see it before this? No. I've what never did seen you think it. about Al Pacino as Michael? Like, is he who you, who you imagined when you read the book? So initially, no, just because those early scenes of Michael when he's like walking in and like he's this respected guy who's a soldier and he's all confident, but he doesn't want anything to do with this. And like, I was like, eh, I don't see like Al Pacino. Like he, he was kind of just like, eh. but then as time went on, I definitely was like, okay, now I'm starting to see it. He's this calmer, suave guy who's got this intense amount of baggage. And now he's going to like do what's right for the family. Like by the end. See, so I mean, they I actually don't like him. Really, it tries to sell you like he's he's the next dawn, like the dawn reincarnated, but he's not. Are you talking about in the book or Al Pacino specifically? Or uh, both? both, both. Okay, he's not because the the movie's pretty faithful to the book. I think. Um, yeah, he's he's not. He's actually like a lot more cutthroat. Everything he's a lot more threatening. And I, this is the part I don't understand. Like, does the movie or the book, do they know that he is actually like a lot harsher and meaner than the Don? Because Vito, it tells you in the book, like when he's younger, like even when he's a young, like brash man, he's the guy that'll be calm to your face. And then he'll just be like, it's business. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Everett, you didn't get to the part where it shows you the flashbacks of, of Vito Don Corleone. Corleone growing up. Uh, I don't think so, no. That's in the second movie. And Robert really? De Niro plays him. Okay. And, okay. and they added some parts like, I don't know if you've ever heard me quote this, but he's like, my name is Antonio Andolini. And he says it like, he has to say it like five times. He's going after the Don that killed his father. That's not in the book. They added that into the movie. And he keeps trying to like say his name so that the guy would know like, this is the this is the son of the man that I killed, but the old the, the Don is like so old at that point he can't hear. <laughs> he keeps he keeps having to say like Antonio Andolini, and the Don's like, huh? <laughs> anyway, um, what were we saying before that? We were talking about Michael, like the differences between him and Corleone. So he is a lot more like he yells, he's he threatens. Like, he, I mean, he doesn't, like, outright threaten, which the Don doesn't either. But he does say, like, why does he, why does he confront Mo Green like that? Like, he's like, is that why? Like, he just brings that up out of nowhere. Like, I'm going to slap, I'm going to, like, don't you dare. Don Vito wouldn't have done that. Well, he's, he's essentially, like, the wartime Don, kind of. Like, I know Vito had his share of wars and stuff. But Michael, like, Vito even acknowledges that Michael's going to be the one to avenge him. And like he he recognizes that Michael's gonna kill all these people and that he can't, but that Michael will. So why, like why I just do you say that he can't, because remember he makes the promise at the meeting he will not be the one to break this peace, and oh, right. like yeah. and they're waiting and it's like he's not gonna go back on his word. I thought you meant Michael. Like- like he didn't have it in him. To do oh no, he absolutely had it in him. But like, in terms of his honor and his sense of self, he made a think, promise not to break the peace. I know that this is why the movie, the the story gets a little weird because, do you think that Vito would have really gone through with what, killing all five? Think about the plan. Like, you're gonna kill all the. Okay, so actually, let's talk about the differences. 
at the end of the movie, they in the in the movie they kill the five heads of the family. Yes, Stracci, Cuneo, Barzini, Tatalia, and Corleone. There's actually a fifth Corleone, and it's not the Corleone family because there's five families of New York, and then like the Corleone family is is like they're in Long Beach in New York. It's it's like the there's a fifth one. Um but in the movie I think they changed that. So like Corleone is the fifth one, like the the main characters. Um so in the book they kill all five, but in the movie they don't. How do you know? Because he says it. I mean you read it. It's it's Barzini. It's no, I know in the book, but how do you know they don't kill them all in the movie? Because it looked like there no, were they five. do in the movie. In the movie, they okay. kill all. He says it. He's like in the Strachi, book, they Kudo. don't. In the book, they don't. Okay. Um, huh. And the yeah. thing is, if you're going to kill all five, even if you're going to kill one, but he, they kill two, there's not going to be like, oh, we did it. The war is over. It's like it's like Russia invading Ukraine, and then like, how do you hold Ukraine? You can't actually hold Ukraine. So well. But in the book, it's implied that like they hit them so quickly that a bunch of their troops come over to the Corleone side, and now they have the power that it's like it's over, basically. I feel like that's a stretch. <laughs> so you that have makes you wonder how you would trust people. Like think about like guys like Clemenza and Tessio and and those like high ranking capo regimes. Those guys, there's going to be like their counterparts in other families. So because some, some kid just knocked off their boss like at, in retaliation, those guys are now going to take orders from Michael? I mean, Tessio betrayed him at the end, and he was treated very well the whole time. Tessio betrayed him, right. I think yeah. that they're all going to be like, no, I'm striking out on my own. Like, let's actually go. Like, now that the lines are drawn and it's like all-out war, let's fight for our ability to run well- ourselves. And so that's another question I had because this wasn't entirely clear to me in either the book or the movie. Is uh, did they actually go to Vegas and become fully legit? I don't remember the second one that well. Because um, the whole thing in the book and the movie is they're explaining that in five years we'll be fully legit. We're going to all move to Vegas, and that. Yeah. But then that seems like it might be a cover because then they go and they like assassinate everybody to be in charge of New York, and it's, it's like. I think it's both. Huh. So I they run both Vegas and New York. Yeah, which is another thing. It's like, okay, these guys are just winning. Like, like this is a crazy amount. Of, you're telling me that they're at half strength because uh, Corleone's gone, uh, Vito's gone, and like they still they're like taking over everything. They don't even have the manpower. Do you guys like think, think about well, how many capos regime? Think about how many capos the Sopranos family has. Mm-hmm. These guys only have Tessio and Clemenza. No, they have that third guy who's the secret one. It's like really strong. It gets revealed at the end of the book. It's not really brought up at in the, the very, movie. very end. Yeah, they bring in Albert Neary, the cop. No, not the cop. The cop is the new Luca Brasi. There's a third guy. But, but he's who has also his... a capo. They they make him a. They give him like I, I believe it says that. Yeah, and then but there's, there's Rocco. There's, yeah. Is Rocco the one who's he yeah. was the one who was he killed uh yeah. what's his name when he betrayed him? Yeah, they yeah. keep mentioning him like hey the Don sees something special. That guy was driving cars, man. I mean I guess I know, it's like but nine at years. At the end, it's like at the end, it's like he has his own massive regime, and that's why they're not allowing uh Clemenza and Tessio to build up their regimes because they have Rocco's secret regime, which they use to take everyone well, it's out. It's not a secret regime, it's just Sonny's regime. They just gave him Sonny's uh part. Oh, I didn't remember that. Yeah, because Sonny, they, they were waiting for Sonny's part to be split up. But anyway, so there's three of them. And like those three guys are going to take over all of New York. Like they're going to keep everyone. You don't even have the manpower. Like we're talking right now about Russia. Like let's just say Ukraine falls today. You need, they need to, they have like 200,000 people in there. They need to like go to 500,000 just to hold the city. Like just think, like just to like keep things in line. Do you understand how, how the, the logistics of it? And I'm thinking like the, the Don Vito that starts the book, I don't think he would come up with this plan. Like I feel like Don Vito, after he's hit and then they make peace, after he allows Michael to return, 
And then he sees like they're not actually going to let Michael return. They are trying to kill him. They tried to kill him in Italy. They're trying to like send assassins right now and make deals. It's like strike at Barzini. And I guess Natalia also just because they're both in on it, which is what the book does. But in order to do like to kill them all, to go like on a full out war, I just don't think it's prudent. Like, and I feel like Don Vito wouldn't do that. I mean, you're listening to my, imagine I'm the Don, like, and I'm telling you, how are we going to hold these territories after we kill, after we chop off all Well, But see, this is where the movie magic thing comes in, where it's just like, yeah, they have as many men as they need. Yeah. And that's like, what I'm saying. Like the, the book brings up a lot of goodwill. It, it like teaches you like, oh, these are real people. Like they have real backstories. They're not superheroes. Like it's family, people die and you, you feel like the stakes are real. And then you get to the end where it's just like, everything is just wrapped up in a pretty bow and everybody is great. Like everything worked out perfectly. And it's like, hmm, not so sure. Like, I feel like we're ignoring some major flaws in the plan here. Um, and like, I understand they push Tom out, but I'm also like, to what end? Why does Don Vito have to be consigliere when he could just tell talk to Michael? Like they could have two consigliere. And also, like this isn't really in the book, but in the movie, it's like uh, Vito's like gone mentally. He's starting to slip. He's like repeating himself, and like he yeah. that's not a great consigliere. Like you don't. <laughs> um, so and then let's talk about. Did you notice like the big difference? The baptism scene. Is when the murder occurs. Yes, all the murders occur. In the movie. Yes. Not the book, though. No. Which I think was a good change. Because the pacing of the book gets really weird. Yeah, especially at the end, because it's like everything's fine, then it's not. Then after everyone's dead, there's still like a ways to go where it's like he has to have all that stuff with Kay. Yeah. Um, and I, even when I was reading the book, the part where they're all like kissing his hand and they close the door in front of Kay, I'm like, that's, a, that's the right ending. But then the book kept going and it was like, Carlo, she, he's got to kill Carlo. And I'm like, okay, I, I forgot that Carlo fingered Sonny. I remember that Sonny dies going to beat up Carlo, but I forgot that, that Carlo had actually done it. Um, I thought that was a good twist. Um, and I like that he gets killed like at the same time. Did you notice that the movie omitted Fabrizio's death? Who's Fabrizio again? Uh, I guess ever. So Fabrizio is the guy that puts the car bomb in Italy. Yeah, I was wondering oh, why that, nothing yeah. happened to that guy. Okay, yes. And he has, a, he has a tattoo that looks like, when he flexes, it looks like people having sex on his chest. And so... Yes, and they find him in that diner he's, in Brooklyn. He's in New right? York make. Why the fuck would you run to New York after you tried yeah. to attack in New York? And, this is what and I'm failed because he's clearly alive. Like, if you if you hadn't built up the goodwill in the beginning of the book, shit like that, I would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> why would you go there of all where they could easily get you? It's almost like why wouldn't they? I almost feel like something like that should have been done in Italy. But whatever. So they they he's working in a pizza parlor and they kill him and then they rip off his shirt to make sure that the tattoo's there. Um, he kills him, he kills Carlo, he kills Mo Green in the movie and in the book, I believe. Yeah. Um, but in the book, I think Mo Green dies earlier. Like they take him out separately because doesn't Luca Brasi or not Luca Brasi, he's Albert dead. Uh, yeah, doesn't Albert Neary go to Vegas to take care of Mo Green? Or they, no, we don't even, we just hear that he's dead. Mo Green was found dead yeah. like, you know, yeah. like a few days. Yeah. Um, Everett, Albert Neary is the guy who is dressed as a cop. And shot mm. Barzini, and he is on, a cop on the, on the steps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. He he was he used to be a cop, and then he like got in trouble for beating up somebody. I forgot who. And he was like way too harsh with the Italians. He was and like, then, yeah, they like demoted him, and he hated his life. And and then the Corleones like were aware of what was going on and had like this is like from for years I think prior to to using him. So like once he does that, he actually gets promoted immediately. Which is like, all right. Um, Remind me, who's the out of all the deaths? Who's the guy that get who has the glasses that get shot like on that masseuse table? That Mo dude, Green. that death was nasty in the movie. That's the guy who slapped Fredo in the casino, and and Michael confronted him. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy who plays Fredo, 
is like one of the most celebrated actors in history. And he, he got cancer and died. He was in this, he was in another fantastic movie, which I suggest you guys watch. We don't have to review it, but it's called Dog Day Afternoon with Al Pacino. And they're like robbing a bank or something. And you've probably seen references to that. Like they're yelling like Gattaca or Attica, something like that. I forget. No, Gattaca is the sci-fi movie, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so they're yelling Attica, Attica though. Yes. I've seen references where someone's yeah, like, Attica. They're yelling Attica. And then he was in Deer Hunter and then he died from cancer. And they, like, Yikes. and so like he, and he's also in Godfather part two, which is, you know, very famous. So um, that's Fredo Corleone. So they, uh, he's, he's really well known. It's been, a, it's been a long time now, but at the time, this guy, like, he had, like, some of the biggest movies in history on his resume, and he's only been in, like, four things. Um, uh, so what else? We were talking about Mo Green. Let's, let me t- take a look at some of my notes. Can I bring up something real quick? Emerson, yeah. you brought up The Irishman just in passing earlier. Um, I, had a, I had an Irishman moment watching this movie. Do you guys remember the fight scene uh, between Sonny and Carlo? on the street yeah. it is sunny and carlo did you no, look closely? it's sunny and some guy that is dressed like carlo okay you can clearly Regardless. see it's not him but you can also clearly see that when he throws the punches some of them don't connect oh yeah, yeah. no yeah so coppola i think they wanted an italian american to do it and they also like they were the studio was putting pressure on him to give him like a violence coach mm. because they felt like he couldn't do that and I would actually agree. I think that there are certain parts of the, of the movie that, that like are well done. Like right before Vito gets shot in the book, it, it tells you like he's so spry that he actually saw them coming right away. And in the movie, you see his eyes for a second, like dart over before he immediately starts running. Like that stuff is good. But then when he gets shot, it's so like, there's like no, there's no like style to it. It's, yeah. it's just like they put a camera and they're like, okay, you're going to run in front where the camera's pointed and then you're going to fall down from the shots. And there's like no cuts to like emphasize. You don't even know where Vito gets shot. Like you can barely tell. He has like a bullet in his back. But in the book, it tells you specifically, like I would have him not like Zack Snyder style slow motion, but like show a little bit about like where he's getting hit. To show well, they kind of he- do that when Sonny gets ambushed. Well, that's because he got hit everywhere. <laughs> but um even like I thought Sonny's was done well because of the, the cuts was giving you like the pacing of like, um, but like, like you said, when Sonny beats Carlo, that's a moment where like Carlo refuses to fight back and Sonny like can't beat him up because of that. Like you can't kill him. And it's like shot from so far away. And, and just aside from the fact that you can't even see the punches. I mean, you can tell the punches aren't landing. Yes. But, like that should be like close-ups and like you should be able to see Sonny's face like looking at him like i like this fucking guy like i can't kill him he's not fighting back because it doesn't come off like that what it comes off like is he's just like ah fuck it i'm leaving it's missing it yeah it's missing it um i'm trying to think of like i, I think they do well with apollonia's death um, yeah i mean but that was that was a cool scene in the book though yeah so the, the most car, iconic scene it? of all huh I said blowing up the car was good. So I like, I, these are the two parts of the movie that I like the most. I like when Don's meeting everybody at the wedding. I like all those meetings. Yeah. I like how he meets his friends first. Uh, in the book, um, the baker talks about how his daughter's getting fat and he's, yeah. he's noticing like that they're rubbing their crotches together and shit. Yeah. Um, it's funny as fuck, dude. But I like, I, I thought, yeah. Anyway. I thought that I like that the baker comes in and you just see like, this is a scenario where like, this is exactly how the Don wants it to be. The guys come to him, they show respect. They ask for a favor. He, he comes through. Then you have um, like Johnny and that's like a more complicated case. And now he has to like work it out. He has to work for the solution. Um, then you have Luca Brasi, who's like, it sets him up. Yeah. Have you guys seen that sleeps with the fishes thing before? Because I, I've heard that line so many times. Yeah, I've heard that line all over. Now you know place, where so. it's from. Yeah. Um, I made a list of all the iconic moments that I can remember from this movie. Yeah. Uh, and then um, then you see Amerigo Bonacera, which the movie starts with him. And I think, first of all, that guy is a fantastic actor. 
Yes. Like, he kind of steals this, the scene a little bit. Um, and there's a deleted scene of him, like when he gets the call to go to the funeral house, whatever. I forget what mm-hmm. it's called. The um, parlor. Yeah. Um, when he starts like, I believe in America. Like that's such a good, that's, that's why like, I wonder if that's where the Vegas stuff came from is like the, this idea of what America is supposed to be versus what it really is behind closed doors. I have to wonder if that's what maybe the celebrity thing was. And I don't know. But um, when he talks about how he didn't get justice and like the guys got away, like well, that shit still happens. And then like, it's actually such good writing because he start he accuses, he, 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 he treats him like he's a paid mercenary. Yes. And like the wording, he's like, how much should I pay you to commit murder? And Don Corleone, and in the book, I think it, it does it a little better. Yeah. Where he's but that's because like, you can see, like that's because in the book it says like he stiffened from the insult of like what was yeah. being implied. And, and yeah. Tom Hagen like looks away like oh like uh, uh, you fucking that. moron. <laughs> yeah. Um, they they never showed um them beating the shit out of those two bar kids in the movie, no, right? No. But the movie's long enough. Yeah. Um, but that's true. You never actually see Amerigo be like, they did it. But what I don't like is how you never see because when he calls, when Don call, calls him. For the for the favor, he's thinking like, what is he going to ask me to do? He's going to have me bury someone they just murdered, or like, yeah. And when he <laughs> sees he just wants him to like prepare his son, he's actually relieved. And so that part is not in it. Um, but I love. I think Amerigo Bonacera's whole thing in this is great. Um, yeah. And and Everett, I don't know if you caught this, but like, it's it's the baker, the baker's like son-in-law that Don Vito helps out that comes to stand with Michael in front of the hospital. Mm-hmm. I remember. And he, like, that's yeah, a good he, has, way. he has the flowers. He comes and he defends him. So you almost think like the ending would be something like that, where all of Don's like friends help him win. Yeah. And but it instead almost, it's just like, and you would think like that would teach Michael something about like how to be a Don. Like he thought it was all cutthroat and kill. And, and I know that's kind of Sonny's thing, but Michael is like more almost scarier. The way that like Sonny just wants to punch you in the face and like whatever. He just wants to Yeah, Michael's away. like plotting the destruction of everything yeah, you have. Yeah, he's, he's out of control. Um, <laughs> anyway, the cat in that scene was just a I think it was a random cat that was on set and like he kept jumping into the scene. And so that's why uh Don Corleone is playing with him. That's an oddly well trained random cat because he puts it down and starts doing the rest of the scene and just sits on the desk the whole time. Well, he's improvising. Sort of, but you see at one point, like the cat acts a little weird and Don, like, look, I should say Marlon Brando, like looks at him <laughs> and then like, like improvs the next line. Like if you want to go back and rewatch it, but there's a part where like the cat like fumbles, like he's starting to act a little weird and Marlon Brando thinks he's, the cat's going to act up and ruin the scene. And he like holds him and like gives him a little attention. And then he like starts talking from here. Yes, yes. Having known that the cat was not supposed to be there, like I, I caught that. Um, also, do you know Marlon Brando refuses to learn lines? They tape lines like on actors or like on <laughs> random props. And he believes that it helps with the spontaneity of his delivery. And I'm like, I can, I can kind of understand the logic of that improv yeah. lines if they're done but well. I can totally see why the studio was like, we don't want this. Fight. I can see how annoying that would be. But... Yeah, can you imagine? Like, you've learned all your lines, you've memorized like page after page, you're ready to go, and they come out and they're like, we need you to wear this on your shirt because the guy you're acting with, he didn't read the lines, so you're gonna have to be facing away from the camera. Yeah. Can you imagine, improv like, is incredibly black and white. It's either really good or it's incredibly cringy. Like, yeah, and like, I, I no trust them to do improv, but what I don't, I'm like, dude, like you can learn a couple fucking lines. Like yeah. it's in the book, um, yeah. and like I guess Luca Brasi was so nervous that he was like actually stuttering, and they 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 used they used it basically. They didn't like, they wanted him to look cause they thought it was great. Um, so anyway, that was the cat. Uh, I really like also like what I would like to have seen is more of like after Amerigo Bonacera leaves and Don kind of looks at Tom, like, and he's like, give this one to Clemenza. Like I would like to see more of the day-to-day operation type stuff. Um, I like that stuff. Mm-hmm. 
um, a good way because Michael, Michael was like in the book, he spends a lot of time describing, like basically giving you the impression that he's an outsider, um, which I actually, ha- I forgot, but like, I don't know if you guys know, but growing up with my mom, I was like completely cut off from my dad's side for a long time. And then it was only when I like moved out as an adult and appeared again with like my American girlfriend that I was sort of like reintroduced to the family in a new way, you know? So like, I didn't catch some of those parallels when I first read it. Cause it hadn't happened yet. When I was in high school is the last time I read this. And I haven't even seen the movie since before that, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the movie does a great job where Don Corleone refuses to take the picture without Michael. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. not in the book. And I think that that's a good way of saying like, Michael is like the special one. Um, although he doesn't really, he doesn't, he, he doesn't show up like an outsider as much. Yeah. The because movie. they're all like, Hey, Michael, like, Hey, how you doing? They man? like him, but he's clearly not one of them. Like they, they, they make that clear. And I guess that's all they have time for. Um, Barzini's at the wedding. He was not at the wedding, I don't believe, uh, in the book. Or if he was, he wasn't, because there were a lot of people there. He just wasn't yeah. specified. He doesn't even show up, and really, and you don't even meet Barzini in the book until you see him at that meeting of all the Dons. Yeah. Um, the whole thing about you can't refuse a request on your daughter's wedding day as a Sicilian tradition, that's made up. It's not a thing at all. Yeah, I feel like that could be taken advantage of like a lot. Um, what do you guys think about the fact that he basically ripped off like Frank Sinatra completely for Johnny Fontaine? I think it's a little, I think he's flying a little too close to the sun for my taste. Like that, that manager story where he got him out of his contract. That's literally like word for word, Frank Sinatra story. I mean, I think that he probably just didn't care. He was like, eh, fuck it. I'm this, making this a character. This was made in the seventies. And I think like, had you made that today about somebody, I think there would have been like lawyers and issues like that um all right another thing that i really like is how santino speaks up one time in the meeting with salazo and the turk realizes that's an and that's what and it gets his father shot yeah Yeah. i'm actually surprised that there is not more fallout on santino because he actually gets promoted i think there's not fallout because he like ends up becoming like the avenging sword for a while there so like they need him yeah, and there's no heir apparent besides him. But I actually think like Clemenza should have taken over. Clemenza should have been head of the family because Santino can't manage the meetings. But I also think Tom is right. Like Santino should have made a deal. Because, uh, like, I mean, just knowing like what, how the future goes, drugs are here to stay. So like if they're they're actually making money without actually being in the drug business. Just but the using- Don the Don's point is right where he's like the Americans are going to treat drugs differently. Yeah. Because he is right because that's when like they went insane like with like zero tolerance and mandatory minimums yeah. and like but after World War II is like the beginning of corporate America. So the racketeering business and like I'm going to walk into your store and make you pay me protection money. That that's going away too. I mean, you see that yeah. in the Sopranos. I don't know if you guys got to that the part. Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. And, and the guy's like, dude, if you like, you can extort me, they're just going to fire me and bring in some other guy. And like, like uh, the computer knows how much money we're supposed to have in the till. And like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, Jesus, like, and, and that's like an old town neighborhood. Come, come to our neighborhood right now. It's nothing but chain. Like, who am I going to extort? Yeah. Exactly. And the chains have power too, that if you're fucking with them enough, it's like, okay, now there's police. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so Rocco, so the interesting thing is the Godfather game is so good and it's so true to the movie. Didn't you say it's like one of the best open world games? For its time. It was made by EA, if you can believe it. Hey, of it course was, I can believe it. It, it is so good. Um, there's so many mechanics in there that you would be like, wow, I can't believe cyberpunk is this bad. Like, how does cyberpunk not have the, the feel and the mechanics that this game has? From like you, well, give me an example. I want to I wanna hear the example. Well, like, um, there is a, uh, there's a system for, uh, a vendetta system 
So the, mm. so there's the five territories. And as you attack, like the vendetta system, the families will come send Hitman after you. Like there's like a scale. And it's like, that's a basic thing that a lot of games try to implement and just butcher. And um, it's actually a really good point. It's, I mean, it's like an older for, game. For Cyberpunk specifically. People talk about the, uh, the, the system from that Lord of the Rings game, Shadow of Mordor, mm-hmm. where they have uh, like that, you know, like you beat the boss and then like people move up in line and whatever. And if you lose to them, then they get strong. Like that's a more advanced system of that. But to have a whole open world and have a vendetta is just tracking five different families in addition to the police. Um, then you can go extort. So you can, uh, you have to go into like different businesses. So like, I'm going to go into Brooklyn and move in on the Barzini turf. And I'm going to go into like their businesses. They have the banks and they have this and that. And like, I'm going to go in and I can actually like grab the, the manager and like slap him around. And if I go too far, like I lose the deal. I can't, I have to like negotiate as I'm beating him up. And, and you can, it has like advanced uh, uh, combat mechanics where like, you can punch, you can kneecap people. It's not like I just shoot you them and they die because they have a health bar. Like I can, I can kneecap the guy and bring him to his knees. And then I can grab his collars and I can punch him as I interrogate him. That's, I mean, where is that shit in any modern game right now? It's out of control. And you can see true. like the meter above their head, like their panic meter. Like if you go too far, you'll lose it. Um, then there's just like, it could do better with the open world, but at the time it was fantastic. Nowadays, I would expect a little more. They should ap- absolutely remaster it. But um, I think- Where did it come out? Uh, it, it was like early 2000s. Okay. Um, and then they remastered it for the PS3. But they should do a remake. The problem is um, Paramount lost the lawsuit to Puzo's like, grandson or something, saying that they oh, were supposed great. to get a payout for any like audio media thing that was made. And so the, it was like a million, millions of dollars in the lawsuit. So I think that like, there has to be some legal issue if they were to ever like make it again or something. There's some, there's some problem there. So um, on YouTube, there's a guy who will teach you how to get it on PC. And I just, I don't know that I want to play it on PC. Um, and if they're going to do anything like now would be the time, because isn't it like the an anniversary, the anniversary of the Godfather? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, what I was saying is like, like the, the hospital, the scene outside the hospital. I know exactly what that whole street looks like because of the Godfather game. And by the way, the character customization, like down to the teeth, man, like everything, outfits, hats, like sliders, everything. You, you, all that shit is gone now from games. Um, but like Rocco Lampone is a guy, he's the, I believe one of the missions, like you and him have to sneak into that, to Waltz's mansion and put the horse head. Interesting. Um, yeah, I want to I want to bring up Waltz for a minute. Um, I, I liked his little arc in the book far better than the movie because in the movie it was a little fast, but in the book they like ex- it, it kind of gives you a little bit more of an explanation of the, how much of a dirtbag he is, and it makes what happens to him and how he reacts I think a little bit better. Yeah, but I think it's interesting because he is the Corleones are are shown as like the good guys against him. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, Johnny Fontaine is kind of a piece of shit. And if that guy doesn't want to work with Johnny Fontaine, I kind of get it. But then it's like, oh, he's also a pedophile. And I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, I, yeah, he's, that makes him bad. So are you saying that everyone is bad or are you saying the Corleones are good? Because I, I don't really see that. Um, I, I kind of saw it more as a, like the reason why I liked all the development is it kind of shows the power the Corleones have without really saying too much, like they kind of explain it, like what kind of a person would go and destroy like a, that, like valuable of a horse for basically no reason. Well, that, and then that's, I, yeah, I agree. But what, what I'm saying is, what is the theme of the book? Like to say that they're being good guys and while America is like corrupt. And so they're doing it their way. But I'm like, but they're also bad guys. Are they? I don't know. They're definitely not good guys. Well, one of the things I found interesting, this was more brought up in the book, but in the book, there was all this talk about how like, you don't target civilians, you don't target families. Like that would be really fucked up. The whole system would collapse. And like, 
Yeah. Modern day, I would. Yeah, but I'm just thinking modern day. They target every like the cartels in Mexico. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, they will but kill those are anyone any time. I think the, the, the did they hang that, tourists from bridges? They like decapitated that couple and stuck them in a well. They're, they're screwed. I up. think the Italian mafia would think that the cartels are like savage. Yeah, but the cartels have been way more successful. The mafia got kind of like cracked down on, whereas the cartels just get stronger. In yeah. the 70s. But you have to remember, like, look at their business. They, cartels are drugs, basically. Yeah. And everything that happens from there is just like for the drug, for the benefit of the drug operation. Like, we're going to kill all these people because, like, we want to move the drugs through this area or like they're trying to take our turf or something. It's all drugs. And that, and that is to, to the Don's point is like, drugs are different. Narcotics are different. Um, but look at, the, look at their business, the Italian Americans. They're, they're like running casinos. It's like white collar stuff. Like they're running casinos. It's, it's like strip clubs, prostitution. It's not, I mean, that's not white collar, but it's more, it's not like, the, yeah. it's not just drugs. No, but it was just interesting because it's like I can't imagine any organizations like modern day criminal organizations adhering to that idea of well, like we're not going to kill. No, no, no. I know, but I'm saying like today, 2022, like in the real world, I can't imagine. Like, I think I think the Italian having mafia, some degree of honor. Italian mob because that it's the, the truth is if you started killing each other's families, it would just immediately degrade into just war. Like it, they're not doing business anymore. Whereas the cartel, I feel like there's so many poor people that are like that are basically grown into it. The like mafia you used to grow up in like the mafia neighborhood, and like that would just be the way things were. But you could leave that neighborhood. What you have in some areas is like oh, the entire country is almost like a cartel dominated place. Like the politicians have no power, like nothing's going on. So, yeah, and the military is like retreating, <laughs> and they're just constantly killing each other, and then like someone else just takes the spot. Um, so they, I, it just, it's just like a terrible cycle of violence. Um, but there is like the, the concept of honor, of course not. Cause they're all rats. And actually in Sopranos, like everybody's a rat. Like as you go through the series, like more and more people are just rats. Um, and, and so like, it kind of spits in the face of that whole honor thing. But th- that's what Tony Soprano says when he, those, the first episode, he's like, do you ever feel like you're you're uh you're coming in at the end of something yeah like I the whole that. italian thing is downhill like by the time he comes in it's almost like being a millennial like world war ii happened america prospered then like the whole reaganomics thing fucked everything 30 years down the road you're coming into adulthood and it's all actually kind of fucked and like on the verge of collapse <laughs> and it's like yeah i i know exactly what he's talking about so like there was a time where, you, where a person could work at the grocery store and afford a house and kids and college and vacations once a year and a car and, and all that crap. That was like the mafia in its heyday. You look at it now and it's like, you can't, you can't rub two nickels together. Like it's, it's, I don't know, it's crazy. Um, how about the way Michael returns to K? Because in the book, he's home for six months. In the movie, he's back for a year. Yeah, but in the book, she also gets informed that he's back by accident was, when the mom says, have you seen him? Which I never understood. So he's avoiding her because of his face? I took it as his face, but I also just assumed, like, you know, with the stuff with Apollonia and, like, he's becoming evil, basically, quote unquote. So. Yeah, but then he wants to marry her. Yep. I'm surprised there isn't a little more pushback about her not being Italian. Um, I think at that point, it's just like, eh, he returned. He can do what he wants. It almost it reminds me a little bit of like the crown where he has to marry properly. And like, I would imagine there would be some issue with that um, and tell him, no, you can't marry who you want to marry or something. But so, so my thing is like, where does Michael get it from? Because you, the book gives you Vito Corleone's origin story, but what you don't get is Michael's. Like he went to war. I think the book could be uh, stronger by showing us like how war changed him. Mm-hmm. Because he, you could make an argument that like he, wasn't, he wasn't the heir apparent when he left. 
he was the special son. He was the outsider. He like rebelled against his father when he left. But when he came back, like he had seen things of the world that made him realize like maybe the family business isn't the worst thing. And like, maybe I want to be a part. Something should have changed him. You could have even like, I don't know, maybe he has PTSD and that's why he, well, he, he fought in the Pacific, right? Yeah. I th- remember all those I stories think- you like, while we were playing battlefield, you tell me about like how the Japanese would torture like American POWs in like the worst ways. Like what if he, yeah. what if he was like a POW or something? Well, I think that would, I think he'd be like way more of a broken person, yeah. <laughs> but just having been a little bit cutthroat, like re, re, reinserting himself into like American life in a place where he fought like tooth and nail against Japanese people who were charging at him with, with bayonets and stuff. Like, and he survived where many he even things. says something like that in the book. At one point he's like, I survived mortar fire and like, like mass yeah, charges. Cause and they tanks. were treating him like a child. Yeah. yeah they're yeah, like trying they to call keep him, him out of civilian. combat or something. Right. They're like, you're a civilian. Don't worry. And he's like, what the fuck? Like I fought like a real war. And yeah. See the movie does actually make him seem like, like they, they, they treat it like he didn't really do much in the war. Like he was like pushing papers. I'm like, they don't, they don't even go into it. And then he does sort of act like a child. And like sort of cowers when they're all like, Michael, like answer the phones. And he's like, okay, like I know my place. But if I had been through actual war and returned, I would not be afraid. Yeah, it's like, like I have actual combat experience. You guys just shoot each other in the streets. Like, yeah, like I know how wars are run. Like where are the logistics? Like what are our plans here? He could actually do. So I would have liked to seen something from Michael that had changed him as an arc because where does he get this edge from? Because like I said, it's not Don's edge. It's not Vito's personality. They try to pass it off that way, but I don't think it's right. And then as you see Godfather 2, like he actually is a little bit more crazy. Um, so that, that's where I would improve. Like cut out a lot of the stuff the movie cut out, but I would sort of give some more characterization to Michael. Uh, I would replace all of the Jules and Lucy stuff with like Michael stuff from the war. Um, uh, anything else? Ever, what, mean, are, what are your what what are you, what's your list of iconic moments? Um, let's see. Um, I'm gonna make him an offer uh, he can't. Uh, I'm gonna make him an offer he couldn't can't refuse. Uh, look how they massacred my boy. Uh, take the gu- uh, leave the gun. Take the cannolis. Yeah. The door scene at the end. The door scene. Um, yeah, like oh, when, when he closes the door. The door. Yeah, when they close the door. Um, that that's what I have. I know there's more. There's also <laughs> that like, what have I done to deserve such disrespect? There's like, that. Uh, like, and and that's in like I don't have that written down though. I'm a fucking little rat guys. Like, uh, and well, that's another thing. I there's so many scenes that are just parodying. Uh, yeah. You you come to the me dawn. on the day my daughter is to be married. That one's parodied a lot. About yeah. um, here's a the reference. horse head. The horse, horse head's head. also parodied a lot. Yeah um how about you guys you guys know like the black panther trailer Mm -hmm. the run the jewel Uh song have you guys ever actually listened to it Mm -hmm. there's like a verse where he's like um i'm like michael corleone and godfather one you get the gun as i christen my son (laughs) (laughs) Um, i mean there's way more obviously the uh the whole like, thing is essentially in Sopranos in season five or six, I think it's season six. AJ attempts to kill Junior to take revenge for what he did to Tony, mm-hmm. and he gets caught, and and Tony comes and like bails him out of jail, and he like pushes him against the car and like tells him what the fuck were you thinking? Like, do you have any idea? Like, you're lucky I got you off. You would have been an accessory to murder like twenty years or whatever the fuck he said, um, and. He's like, what were you thinking? And he says, and he's like, you're a fucking hypocrite. Every time you watch Godfather, you sit there with your bowl of ice cream and you say that the scene where Michael kills Salazzo and and the cop is your favorite scene. And Tony like is about to cry because he's like, that's just the movie, (laughs) you idiot. Like, it's a really good scene, actually. Um, And I, I actually read that that scene initially was supposed to be Tony like beating the fuck out of him. I think I got to that episode. Isn't the doesn't he like doesn't he drop the knife or something in front of Junior? He 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 goes in the stab him and then he drops the knife before he even gets to him by accident, and then he gets like caught, and then he's in jail and Tony comes and gets him. 
Yeah. Um, all right, Emerson, do you have a fight of the week? Yeah, I do. So if the three of us were in the world of the Godfather Kia and we were like, we had to be like, you know, relatively significant people, who would we be? And uh, how would that change the outcome of the story? Relatively, what, what do you mean? Like, we, we can't just be random henchmen. We have to be like, if, if we had to be put in, where would you slot us? You're saying like, in what roles are we assigned characters? to in, in the mafia? Yeah, what roles are we assigned to? Like, who, who do we become in the Corleone? Well, there's uh, so the many dynasty. people. So like, it's weird I because I would replace you guys and then, but the other people would still be there. Well, what are the roles? There's the, there's the, the head. No, but my point is the point, the point I'm trying to make is like where, if if you were like, okay, the three of us get slotted in, where do we get slotted in? Like who, who do we become? And how does that change the outcome of the story? Um, I mean, I guess if I was the Don and then I died, I could see, Emerson, I could see you being more crazy than Michael. You think so? Being yeah. like, we got to destroy all of them. We're going to do this crazy grand sweeping thing. And then Everett, who would you be? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to, I mean, you could be Luca Brasi. <laughs> but the, the guy that everybody I'm like, where the and fuck is dies? Everett? Everyone's <laughs> trying to figure out where he is. Yeah. We're like, dude, where is Everett? Does anyone know where he is? Except and that instead he's of being he's... assassinated, he just overslept or something. <laughs> Everett yeah. sleeps. With yeah, I like the. I have like this crazy plan where I'm like, we're gonna kill every single one of them. Like, we're gonna wipe out all the families, and then it all relies on Everett doing one thing, and like he's not there, and then I get gunned down. <laughs> you had one job. Hey, hey, sorry, boss, I slept in. <laughs> Didn't have my like, I'm halfway through the plan i swear <laughs> i'm halfway there i'm almost there <laughs> halfway through like, reading the plan like ever did you get the 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 mission brief i sent you he's like yeah i'm halfway yeah, I through read half of it. hasn't yeah. started it he's like yeah i'm like what, what what's the plan then he's like you know like i'm getting you know i'm getting through it it seems like a good plan <laughs> ever I, I gave it, it to my dad ever i sent it to a i translated it in korean so that it wouldn't fall into enemy hands you have to translate it back. He's like, no, no, I, I read the mission in Korea. Like, it's fine. Like, no, ever you didn't understand it. He's like, I don't think it had any difference on my opinion of the plan. And he's like, are you saying like the whole family standing in that room and they're all going over the plan? They're like, what do you, what do you think, Ever? I'm like, hey, you know what? Uh, I, I like it, but I didn't really understand most of it because it was in Korean. And they're like, what? Jesus. I can, Im- I can imagine like Kia being the boss and Emerson being his like right hand. I can imagine you being sent to deal with like the movie producer. But, but that's like, the thing in the people. movie. See, if I, if I was like, okay, what's the smartest play? I would rather be the heir apparent because I wouldn't want to give up having Don Vito. Yeah. Cause he's so then, fucking, he's a force. So then <laughs> I would be the heir apparent who would like learn from him ideally. Um, but if, but if we like, the problem is then where does Emerson go? I could be Rocco. I mean, you could be, you you might be able to be Tom Hagen, maybe. Just giving advice, except instead of him being like, listen, we need the de escalate, I'm like, we can kill them all if we just catch them. I mean, that's basically the role you are now in our friend group. That's <laughs> <So>. true. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> and Everett's, uh, Everett's not really Loco Brasi in our friend group. <laughs> he doesn't exactly inspire fear. <laughs> That is that is very true. I mean, I guess if you take what when we played Ghost Recon, Kia, you would be the Dawn slash heir apparent. You're like the t- the the front of it. I'm the support intelligence. Which yeah, sure, that's Tom. Oh, and then Everett is. Everett's hard to fit because he can follow orders until but he like, panics, but you don't trust him to manage necessarily. Mm. So like. Like he wouldn't be Clemenza or Tessio, but he would still be like part of the inner circle. But like that character doesn't exist in Everett's Fredo. Yeah, I'm Everett's Fredo. Fredo. Everett's Fredo. Everett's Fredo. You Holy like send me off, you like shit. show up and see me like Fredo, a dude. Dude. and I'm low Holy Everett's shit. Fucking Fredo. Everett's Fredo. I get shot and Everett's crying on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. He drops his gun. That's Everett. Oh my god. Actually, I'm more like Sunny now that I think about it. I just go like fucking no, no, off. Sunny, Sunny's crazy. Like, not even I'm like Sunny. Okay, that's fair. But so yeah, Sunny, Everett, and Sunny's then Everett's in else. Vegas, and you have to you have to show up, you're like Everett. And I'm, I'm like torn between yeah. like the two people I'm loyal to. Yeah. Because, because they send Freddy. That's perfect. 
they send Fredo to Vegas, but not to be in charge. Like he's there to like facilitate, which is like, that's exactly what you would send Everett for. Like, don't make him run the casino, but like he can be the underling to the guy who runs the casino. And that would be a good role. And then I come around, I hear like Everett's been slapped around. <laughs> uh yeah that was that's a good one um okay let's move on to roundup mm-hmm. i've been re-watching vikings okay um just as like research for my book and um like i i think that show's really good it does have a few stupid parts i would say 90 percent of the stupid things in that show are when they try to make lagartha the, the woman they try to make her like badass like that, is this is this on netflix it's on Vikings. Amazon right and Hulu oh, right now. Okay. Uh, no, it's not. No, there's like a Viking Valhalla thing. That's Leif Erikson. This is Ragnar Lothbrok, who is a mythical Viking. Like they're okay. not sure he actually existed. Um, well, because I've seen like some memes before that there's some Netflix show where like a black woman became the leader of the Vikings on one of the shows. There's two no. Netflix things. One looked good. One looked stupid. Um, the Leif Erikson one looked okay. Like I think Vikings is better. But Vikings is done. So, I mean, I got to say, I, I know we've talked about this before. Aside from the, like, kind of stupid parts where Lagatha is, like, murdering men in combat, um, the, the battle for Paris, that alone is worth the price of admission. It, the fact that they did that on, like, a cable TV show on that scale showed, like, real armies. And it's cool because it's the Vikings attacking Paris. And you have one episode prior to it where it's like the, the guy, the commander in charge of the French defense is like, we, we, these are the people that we, like attacked England and we know that they're here, they're coming. And we've prepared for like three months of rations. The city will hold, like we have a plan. And it just like builds up the, the French princess is there. Like she's involved. The French king is a coward. And then Ragnar and his Viking band um, like come with full force and try to attack the Paris walls and you see it and it's like from a couple different places around the Paris and they show you a lot of Paris. It's really cool. Um, and it's all realistic. Like it's axes, it's swords, it's um, like crossbows and like boiling oil. Like that's what the battle was fought around that. And the Vikings lose and it actually, they actually get to a part where they're like kicking ass and like, it's terrible for the French. But their whole their defense is holding because they have so many like like uh, contingencies for defense. And um, at one point, Ragnar finally gets on top of the wall, and he briefly like sees Paris in all its glory. Like he sees it for a second before he gets thrown off the wall and crashes into the ground, and the rest of them are thrown off. And like, yeah, it's really cool. Like I think I think it's really cool. The, the show basically has like phases which is one is ragnar's rise to power then it's ragnar's expansion into england and paris both of which end up being failures and then there is and i haven't finished it but it's like ragnar is rumored to have died at the hands of king ayla and he was fed to snakes and so that does happen in the show at some point and then it's like the war of ragnar's sons as they fight over the throne and i don't know how it ends um but like Alexander Ludwig is in it from Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple other people. I don't know if you'd recognize them, but it, it's a it, it's a good show. Like I'm enjoying it. Um, okay, cool. Have you guys right. watched anything? I haven't watched anything. No. I so for gaming, I finished Dragon Age Inquisition. It was good. Say, for, no, I, I don't think so. Oh Jesus! I don't think so. I, I think Dragon Age Two was better. Um, it's a Bioware game and it was a more modern one. So I was expecting it to have like mass effect type storytelling where things matter. And if you don't do certain things, like it has consequences, characters will die. No. Mm-hmm. And it's and like, it's the fantasy world, which I don't like as much. Like the, the villain is just like, it's like spells and magic and at the end every, you know, the, the, the world is saved and everything's happy. And yeah. That kind of sucks. I, I yeah. put a lot of time into it, and I was disappointed with the ending. Um, I feel like there was something I wanted to bring up, but I'm blanking for some. I have reason. a couple things for gaming. 
Um, so the first thing, so For Honor got a pretty big update. It now has full crossplay between PS and Xbox. Surprise, they're and still supporting that game. Me too, honestly, and yeah. PC. So it's got full crossplay. They've introduced hero skins now, which are skins you can buy for the heroes that change the way they fundamentally look in ways armor couldn't at all. So to give you an idea, there's like a hero in the game where you can customize the individual pieces of armor, but he never could look like like a fantasy knight, like with full plate armor and like a big winged helmet. And now you can get that and put it on the hero. It doesn't change how he plays. It doesn't give him any stats, but it's like, a like oh, you wanted to look like this thing, which you could never build. Now there's this thing. And they also announced that they're adding new maps and two new heroes. So that's continuing. Interesting. Okay. Uh, the second thing is that I've been playing a lot of Total War Warhammer doing the big campaign. And, uh, God, I know you, Kia, you said you weren't interested, but I'm having so much fun with it. There, there's this mechanic that, like, at a certain point in the game, the end times begin, and this invasion force comes from the north. And throughout the whole game you're playing, like, you're building up, you're fighting your enemies, making allies, and you're getting rumors from the north. And, like, you send expeditions, and they disappear, and, like, there's, yeah, like, something... Here's the thing. Like, I'm not against the game. I was looking for, like, something that would help me be artistic reference but right. i would play this game the problem is every time we play games like this i'm like thrown into it i don't know how to play these games like i, I don't know really i know i know i That's don't get a lot problem. of support in like entering and like i don't know I, I feel like then we just stop playing and i just spent 60 bucks on no and i know that but it's like i keep playing but then it's like i'm the only one who's playing and it's like okay but it's fucking sick like i was playing i was playing as this nation i had allies and then like this event happened where it's like something's happening to the north and i was like whatever because i was fighting a war in the south and then like i sent some troops to the north because the trade had stopped like it said like the trade's over and everything was destroyed like the forests were burned the cities were gone and there's this giant fucking army of like invaders just moving from the north so i had to like rally everything i had to like try to stop and it's fun i, enjoy I mean it. if you hold my hand through it i'll play it but... i will i hey i did it with everett and then he betrayed me so i'm willing, <laughs> I'm willing to how did do you it. betray him i taught him hearts of iron four in depth okay i fucking sat with this motherfucker for hours <laughs> teaching him bit by bit by bit and then he's like hey i'm gonna go over here and i was like okay well you, know, you are just that mad that you wanted to do you wanted to do like this whole giant playthrough each person on a different continent it would have been great you pitched it to everyone and out of every one of our group i'm like one of the only people that said i'd do it no and then it just last time happened. i said that was interested you went i'm interested in playing the fallout mod yeah, I said I'm I'm showing interest in playing it with you. I the said I do. Fallout mod specifically, which is more. So are you saying Everett stopped playing? Is that how he betrayed you? I kept asking, like, yo, let's play. I, let's I'll play, play let's Hearts play. of Iron with you. And then he's like, yeah, next time, next time. And then I will play Hearts of Iron with you. I like we'll Hearts see. of Iron. Hearts. I was we'll getting see. good at Hearts of Iron. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's uh, would the Witcher announcement be in news? What Witcher? Oh, the Witcher. They announced 4? the new game. Yeah, it's no, just like no, a picture. It's gaming. Uh, yeah, I heard a, so they I heard a rumor it. that's gonna that it's gonna be the what is it the school of the cat instead of school of the wolf. Yes, uh, the rumor is that it's gonna be a prequel, right? Oh, oh okay. Is that what I you mean, heard? Are you guys excited? I, well, that? I heard that it's not gonna no. be Geralt, and you're not. It might be. It might be Siri. Well, if it's a sequel, I think it'll be Siri. But but based on for whatever reason, I don't know because of the fact that it's the lynx instead of the wolf. That somehow suggests a prequel, uh, according based on the comments I was reading. I don't know why, um, and I have no faith in them to put out a quality game anymore. It's going to take a while, regardless. So we'll see. Even though you were such a fan of The Witcher, yeah, but they—it's the same people that made Cyberpunk. But Cyberpunk's a different style of game, right? So it's like yeah, but the quality was trash. That's true. <laughs> and and people people are saying, like, the people that made Witcher 3, Witcher 3 is an old game. Not, not uh, that old. 2015 is not that old. Almost 10 years. And in the gaming industry, like, people leave. They're not, people aren't working there for seven, eight years. Like, they've moved on. The people that uh -huh. made that game have moved on. Because think about it. It came out in 2017. It was in development for, like, probably three or four years before that. So those people have left. And, and even if they didn't leave, if they okayed Cyberpunk, then fuck them anyway. Like, but I, I've heard that they left. Um, so I have absolutely no faith. I think you're going to get microtransaction bullshit. Um, 
I think you're going to get glitches. It's one of those games that'll be playable like a year and a half after its release. And you'll see articles. Yeah. Like new update finally makes the game like worth your time or something. It's like, yeah, fuck that. Like, Uh, I mean, I still like cyberpunk, but speaking of, uh... yeah, but it's trash. Like the mechanics are trash. Speaking of microtransaction bullshit, are you going to bring up the GTA thing? Oh, uh, fuck yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So GTA online plus. Okay. It is $5 a month. I'm going to, let me bring up right here on my computer, all the things that it adds. GTA. Plus. The balls on rockstar games to even. Attempt- okay. This is, this is absolutely insane to think about what this is like, quote unquote, offering for the price. Okay. So here's a breakdown of the benefits GTA plus members will receive in the first month, March to April. So it's launching this month. It launches March 29th in two days. Okay. And it's a, uh, it's a five 99 a month recurring price. So if you want to play GTA, you have to own GTA, pay for the online and then pay $6 a month. And here's what you get. Wait a minute. You can't play online free anymore. You have to pay for it. No, but my point is that if you want to do plus, you have to buy the game. And if you're on Xbox, you have to pay for Xbox Live. Or if uh, you're on okay. PC, you have to play for PS. Doesn't PlayStation play charge now? Yes. They do now, yeah. So you have to pay for both of those. So you have to pay the fee to be able to play online anyway. And then on top of that, you've got this $6 fee. So here's what these people get for their 6 bucks. GTA 500,000 delivered automatically to your Maze Bank account which you can spend with them. Fantastic. Uh, the Princip Devastati 8, along with a complimentary how special works upgrade for it before it is made available to purchase by the public, plus exclusive orange and glitch liveries. The auto shop located in La Mesa introduces an assortment of gameplay updates. Current auto shop owners can relocate at no additional cost. Waived car membership fees and players who have already paid car membership fees will be reimbursed GTA 50,000. Yacht owners can upgrade to the Aquarius Super Yachts at no additional cost. The Gusset Frog Tee and Broker Prolapse Basketball Top and Shorts automatically added to your wardrobe. A new livery for the Avenger APC and Kanjali Tank a selection of free paints and emblems, three times GTA money and RP on special works races, two times car meet reputation on street race reps. And GTA Plus members can also take advantage of a special GTA Plus shark card that provides extra bonus cash for your buck from the PlayStation Store or Xbox Microsoft Store. So let me see if I got that right. They're giving you, by paying $6 a month, they're giving you the opportunity to buy something else. Correct. You get exclusive shark cards. So you pay $7 so you can pay like $35 to get $3 million. It's obscene. And think about those things I just listed. Most of them are like, you get a free paint job. You get a nice pair of basketball shorts. The clothing fucking sucks, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I haven't changed my outfit for like the last seven years. In that well, game. there's no body type sliders. Like, Dude, it's obscene. It's actually obscene that they're paying. Yeah. Like they're trying to milk every last fucking dollar from that fucking yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, that's insane. Also- I, I think it's predatory because they're trying to get kids, basically. Yeah. Well, they do get – like, think about the people – every time you – I haven't played that in a long time. But last time we were playing that, every time you join a game, it was someone running around with, like, a $10 million flying motorcycle just destroying you. Yeah. Yeah, that's all it is. So did you guys see this deleted scene from – The Joker? Uh, yeah. I saw that you yeah. sent it. I, I didn't get a chance it. to watch it. I, I actually it. think that this scene is better – than what you got from the Riddler. Now I don't like this Joker at all. Like, I like he doesn't seem like a threat. At all. He seems just like an idiot, like a crazy person. Um, I don't know what they're talking about. Like that that they went through a year ago or whatever. Um, I don't. I think he's really overdoing it, Barry Keegan. But I like the the concept that he's going to. The Joker, actually, now that I think about it, it doesn't make much sense, but he's going to the Joker to see, like, hey, help me with Riddler. Like, who is this guy? 
and I guess if this is the first like psycho you ever really dealt with, you might go ask him for help. I get it. But I wouldn't know, like, what do the Riddler and Joker really have to do with each other? The Joker's not about planning and, like, uh, elaborate schemes. So I don't really think that, that it helps. But whatever. I, I, I guess it makes sense to have the Joker in there. Um, but they're having, like, a really long conversation. It's a little odd. And he, I mean, his face is burned with acid. Is that... What that's supposed I to be? I think that's what they're trying to go for. That he fell into the vet. I, I don't think this this guy, Barry Keegan, really has the the right face for the Joker. His face is very droopy, and I just think he looks kind of stupid. What's that version of the Joker that like has his face sewn on to his original face? That's the death of the family Joker. Yeah. Kind of. But, but I like the idea bit. of introducing him through a blurry lens. It's like you can't actually see him. I think that that's cool. Yeah. That He just doesn't look scary to me. He looks stupid. He looks like a Pizza Hut pizza. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck you're ordering from Pizza yeah, Hut. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Those that's, vegetarian that's... pizzas the coming out weird. They're murder. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if if they're gonna say like he got burned by acid and that's why he looks weird, fine. But I just also know like physically he's not imposing at all. So, like oh, Heath Ledger close. was physically imposing. I don't mean because he was buff, but like he had like a presence. So did yeah. Jack Nicholson. Uh, Jared Leto was he had somewhat of a presence. I, I... <laughs> he had something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, like the way you'd see like a homeless person on the subway presence. <laughs> Barry Keegan reminds me of like he has like a teenager's body like he's like kind of small and like not a wide oh frame God, like, yes uh, Morbius director clears up multiverse confusion and claims there is a Spider-Man in Sony's Marvel Universe so what I happened saw- was the le- leaks have been coming out about what the post credit sequence is and it's two post credit sequences so before I get into what they are let me tell you my theory on what has happened which you guys can, I've been right basically this whole time. And, and when I say that, what, what I mean is I was right about the fact that they were not cooperating with each other. So here's what happens. They have Morbius. Morbius was filmed like three years ago. Morbius was in the chamber. Amy Pascal is like, fuck it. I'm going to force my way into the MCU. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to put Michael Keaton in my movie as Adrian Toomes. And we're going to, make it seem like they're all in the same universe. COVID happens. Morbius gets significantly delayed. Venom comes out and they force their way. They, instead of doing it with Michael Keaton and Morbius, they decide to send, um, because they know what's going on in, in No Way Home, they decide to send Tom Hardy's Venom into the MCU, prompting everyone to be like, oh my God, they're working together. Venom's in the MCU. I was the first one to say that that scene seemed super fishy and didn't seem right and didn't seem like they were actually cooperating between studios. And it seemed like Amy Pascal can force Tom Holland to do it because his contract is with Sony. And like, I, I just, like, I felt like there was something really weird. Then we see No Way Home. There's no Venom in it. Then in the post credit sequence, it's literally the MCU booting Venom right back out, having not interacted at all. And they even leave a piece of the symbiote just to be like, we don't need you. Fuck off. I'm guessing there was like a bunch of lawyer talk, you know, prior to that happening where they established that Sony cannot do that. They cannot force their way into the MCU, not without like permission. And so what you see here is there were rumors of massive reshoots for Morbius, like not massive, but like, what are they reshooting? The film has been done for three years. Like, why are you reshooting? And it was, and they kept saying it's Michael Keaton's part, which I immediately speculated is like, it's because they can't say that they're in the same universe anymore. So they're trying to fix it somehow. So what happens is in the first post credit sequence, Michael Keaton is transported from his own cell in the MCU to, to his cell in Morbius's universe, which they're saying is also Venom's universe. How that happens, I don't know. To what degree do they say like it's Adrian Toomes? 
in the movie? I don't know. But they're saying that in publicity, that it's the same guy. I don't know why you could do that, but you couldn't do Tom Hardy. Something's going on. I don't understand. But he comes in. He's in the cell. And then there's a second post credit sequence where Morbius is then like confronted. He's in the desert and fucking Tombs flies up in the vulture suit. In the vulture and suit. And it's like, is slightly different from the MCU version. And it's like, I want to take revenge on Spider-Man. And everyone goes, yeah, because he doesn't remember who Peter Parker is. I was like, but he's, he knows that he's not in the same universe. So like, who's the Spider-Man that he's talking about? So now the director is clearing up this information. Morbius lives in the same universe as Venom. This is because it's not clear in the movie. This is the universe we saw Venom exit at the end of Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and return at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home. I don't know what these are. Okay, these are like responses to other people, the ones beneath that. But okay, you know what's fucking hilarious about this? I saw a meme on Twitter where someone was like, when the director spoils his own movie, because the dude is literally spoiling the ending to try to get ahead of the everyone being like, what yeah. the fuck does this mean? Yeah, because there's a lot of like, what are they doing? Uh, when he responds with, of course, when he was asked if Spider-Man exists in that part of the multiverse. So he's saying there is a Spider-Man. We just don't know who actually. Um, suggesting we'll discover the answer soon about which Spidey that is, which means that they don't Watch know. Watch them bring doing. in a fourth Spider-Man. It's like not Tom Holland, not Andrew Garfield, not Tobey Maguire. It's just a Spider-Man. It's Miles I Morales. Think, I think they're 100% trying to get Tom Holland to do it, to bank off of that. And I think that more likely he'll be like a variant of the MCU version. But why, how can they use, like, are the lawyers freaking out again? Is that what's happening? Like, how could they use Michael Keaton as Adrian Toons? Um, oh, oh, okay. I wanted, I, I couldn't find an article about it. Where, so you just have a breakdown of what the actual scene is? I, I know what the actual scenes are, the two scenes. Because it makes no so sense. The first one is he gets transported from a portal in his own dimension into the portal in the Morbius dimension. There's no record of him being a prisoner there. So they have to let him go. Okay. Yeah. So they have to let him go. So he goes free. And then in the second post credit scene, it's, or, and then as he goes three, he tells Morbius, like we should get in touch or something. And then, which I think we saw on that trailer where he's like, what's up doc? Like we should work yeah. together. Um, and then in the second scene, Morbius is in the desert and he sees something in the distance. Tombs flies up in the suit and says, I want your help in like taking out Spider-Man and Morbius agrees. Right. And he has no beef with Spider-Man. Yeah. And it's not the right Spider-Man that he has a beef with for Tombs. Um, when, when the director asked, how did he get a new vulture suit? The director said it's because he's a resourceful guy. It's like, well, he needs Chit- Chitari tech. Like, yeah, it's so stupid. It. It's so stupid. Anyway, that movie's coming out like in a week, I think. Are you still excited for it? No, no, but I'd be interested in the figure. That's about it. Um, here's like a mashup of all the Spider Man suits. Uh, that doesn't webbing. look great to me. No, uh. This thing is hideous. This gold spider, but yeah. it's the raised webbing of. Uh, Toby suit. It's the eyes, I believe, of Andrew Garfield suit, and it is the gold spider. Did, did Honestly, they make you take this in the, the gold PS4 spider version? away, it would look okay. Would you say, Everett? Did they make this in the PS4 game? Because no. it kind of looks like the graphics of that a little bit. Uh, I, yeah, actually, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they did use that and like just like copied it over somehow. Because it's definitely Toby's whole suit. Yeah. And then they changed, they put the thing over it. Yeah, maybe they did. It's a um, weird, but okay. Here's another look at Thor Love and Thunder's a costume. Okay. From this ornament toy. People are like, oh, the helmet looks terrible. Eh. <laughs> but he, he does look like an eternal, which is kind of funny. And yeah, the chainmail is gold, which is interesting. Interesting. Okay. Star Wars series set during the High Republic era. So, mm. 
Grammar like Stranger Review. Things in Space is what it's pitched as. Stranger Things in Space. Weird. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Halo. We didn't talk about that, Halo. That's what I wanted to bring up. Okay. I didn't get to watch it. What? I didn't. I, I wanted. I wanted because I know you did. I know you did. I know you watched it, so I wanted to hear your opinion on it. Um, I give it a draw, mainly because I it just didn't seem like good enough as a show. Like I I can't see myself spending an hour every week to watch that. I just can't. Okay. But um, the graphics look good. There, you know, it's a little bit blurry and some of the elites the elites are a i've heard that it's pretty violent like they use like they like blow people yeah. apart and stuff yeah like more than what you see in the games like when they when the elites when the humans get hit with the plasma blast they their like limbs get shot off um jesus okay but uh because that didn't it wasn't like that for the soldiers in the game they would like take shots and um so they've done something with master chief where like he 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 touched a beacon, and it like gave him visions of his previous life, like uh, like when he was a child and his mother, and there's like some mystery there. Okay. So you have to give Master Chief some type of personal arc, and so they've decided to go the route of like, who is this guy? Like, where did he come from? So like, that's going to be the show, basically. Is that's him? A- what? I was gonna say that's a pretty big contrast from the way it normally is, but okay. Yeah, yeah but there's no game show game otherwise. Any arc. I, I yeah, know, but there's no show otherwise. Like, that's it. Um, so it has to have a show. So the, it has to have an arc to be a show. So they gave him an arc, and I, you know, it'll go into that. You see him take off his helmet. Um, In the first episode. Everett, the things you like focus on are odd, dude. Everett, they, you know why he doesn't take off his mask? It's because. The, the research says that it helps people identify as themselves with the character. It also make it also provides the the view that he's like a, a like a merciless super soldier. Like the mm-hmm. fact that there's no there's reactions no show there. and emotions and stuff. There's no show there. There has to be a show. There has to be character. You, you there. It's not just for Halo fans. It's for people that watch TV. People I know. People are gonna watch TV just to be like, he better not take his helmet off. Like. But I mean, uh, what's the what's wrong with his original arc? I mean, the whole thing is like what his original arc? arc. The original arc from Halo with him is that a all the Spartans know that they got abducted as children, and then they don't care. They're just bred for combat from childhood. That's all they know. So that they're like emotionless weird to me. people. They're that emotionless people. Weird. But specifically with Master Chief, they use Cortana to humanize him, and that's what like helps him open up and become more of a person. It's their bond, the two of them together playing off one another that's that's the arc that i think works is cortana Um, even in the first episode no but that doesn't seem like that great of an arc i mean that's what they do throughout halo one through four why would they go through all that they do it for like five seconds throughout halo one why would they go through all that training to dehumanize them only to like try to rehumanize them they don't try to rehumanize them it's it happens naturally over the course of the war they pair her with him because the they think that it'll make them a better combat team. It's a byproduct that she ends okay, up humanizing. I mean, that them. could still happen. This set, this is actually set at like the beginning of the Covenant War. Okay, all right. Like, like they don't the the colony that gets attacked at the beginning doesn't even know what the Covenant are. They think it's propaganda. Yeah, that's that's pretty par for the course, though. And that's the same. Yeah, so it's earlier on. But basically, uh, what I'm hearing from this is, Kia, you think it's like mediocre but basically like most of the stuff that's out there it's just like okay so there's some mystery going to be with master chief you either are interested and okay with seeing that week after week or you're not i'm personally not interested in spending an hour of my time to like watch the show progress to tell me master chief's story i might watch it later if people say it's really good like i might watch the rest of it so how would you compare this first episode to the first episode of book of boba fett I didn't watch the first episode of Book of Boba Fett. You, so of the Book of Boba Fett you did watch, how would you compare this episode? Compared oh. to The Mandalorian, then. Compared to The Mandalorian. Uh, better. Mandalorian had a decent first episode because it's like 
you don't know where it's going. If, if you tell me in the first episode, by the way, this is all just going to be a shit ton of filler. Like once he meets Grogu at the end of this episode, it's like just like him going to places doing bitch quests. Do you think time. it could be the same thing for this show? If it's no, if it's I think that they're one. actually going to tell a story. Um, so watching, so watching. Everyone wants one, to hate it so badly. I would say that there are. I have people. no faith at all. My interest was peaked at the end of Mandalorian a little higher. That's what I'm trying to say. Is like when when he's like trying to kill the target and it's like a baby Yoda that I didn't know existed. I was like, oh, I wonder where this is going. Having hindsight and seeing that it goes basically nowhere, and it's just like non nonstop bullshit for two seasons until there's actually an ending and then they just undo it after that yeah like whatever i i think that halo it has a story like and it's also a pilot you have to give it a little bit of a break for that sort of thing because something like the mandalorian is guaranteed to continue whereas this one you ha- it has a pilot and then they make the pilot and then the show gets greenlit so it's possible that it'll improve in many ways um that's one of the weaknesses of of like cable writing network writing is that they they often take a little bit of time to settle in okay Uh, like if you watch are are the actors good at least like yeah who who, like who plays master chief and all those people it's the guy it's lee schreiber's brother uh, the guy who played Sabretooth's brother Mm -hmm. all Um, right he was in 13 hours he's uh porn stash on orange is the new black Okay, uh, he's a good actor. He's fine, but but see, the reason I'm asking about Boba Fett is because remember when we had this conversation last week, Everett liked Book of Boba Fett in the end, but he Halo was and like yeah. no, because Halo he's giving dead. Book of Boba Fett a pass because he he likes the source material, but for some reason he refuses to give Halo like a pass on anything. <laughs> I don't I'll, even think it deserves a pass. It's there's no such thing as like the way it should be. There's never been a Halo I, I TV do. show. I tried to explain this to you guys. I didn't like Book of Boba Fett. There were a few things I liked, but overall, I didn't. Yeah, but you were Boba along Fett. for the ride for quite a yeah, while. Yeah, I was along for the ride. I love Star Wars as a whole. Of course, I'm going to watch that. Of course, yeah, I'm going to watch Halo. Yeah, but that argument applied to Halo, my dude. Of course, I'm going to watch Halo. I just haven't had the chance to watch the you episode. You said you weren't going to watch it last week. And then I agreed that I'd get, before I yeah, complain, I'd give it a chance. It. Oh, okay. I'd give well, it I just, I'm just curious to see. I'm probably not going to watch it, full disclosure. I just think it's funny. I think you should watch the first episode. Eh, I'll check it out, but I'm, you're going to have to show me where you uh, found it so I can <laughs> You know where to it find out. it. <laughs> um, it's not... Uh, I didn't even think there was anything bad. I just wasn't like... The idea for a pilot is you at the end of the show, you're supposed to be like, okay, I want to see what happens next. And I can see they're doing something about what happened to Master Chief. And I could see that it's going to be an hour of my time every week. And that's really like, I, I'm more unique to that. Like a lot of people will, will spend ridiculous amounts of time on bullshit. Like I just did it for Dragon Age thinking there was going to be a payoff. And I'm like, I regret the time that I spent. Like, I'm actually mad about that. A lot of people will sit and watch TV for hours. Like if you mm-hmm. tell them, oh, it's an hour long show. They're like, oh, great. I love that. Like I love binging shows like that. Like I'll, I'll, I'll put it, I'll put it this hours way. To binge. You, you guys know how much I love Halo as the source material. Like, I'm obsessed with those games. I love the lore. I love all that stuff. I, I, I have to give it the same level of leeway as I do Star Wars because I love Star Wars. I gave Book of Boba Fett uh, a chance, and it ended up being bad. But I gave, it, I gave it the full chance. So I'll give Halo the full chance. I'll watch it. I'll see what I think of it. But I mean, in, its, in, in its defense, from what I've seen people arguing about online about it, there's not really a lot of, like, real problems like the main thing i see people arguing about are the fact like what's the thing you mentioned like the elites are too fat or they don't like the fact that they cast black actors as like original white characters <laughs> really useless arguments i don't know like, yeah but if your argument is going to be like oh this isn't this isn't how they did it in the books or something like who cares i, I have to i think i have to get past the mindset of it's not this isn't the games this is this is something original and new they're just taking the characters and the source material and spinning it to something that they think is creative and well they might actually be able to tell a, a good story so like, I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt i'll give them a chance on that but if it ends up being bad on its own then i'll complain but for now i'll give it a watch and i'll i'll, um, I'll give it a good i'll give it a good look he hulk supposedly not shaping up to be very good due to potential creative it. issues i love it interesting oh we're off to a good start okay um 
Uh, there's no way of knowing. No clue the possibility of Deadpool style fourth wall breaks and even a cameo from what Marvel Studios fuck? president Kevin Feige. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've not heard good things behind the scenes, Snyder alleges. And I've asked whether it's Moon Knight or Miss Marvel or Secret Invasion or any of these projects. They're always like, She Hulk is the one that could be a problem. I've heard it from people working on it, from people actually working on it who are just like, We'll see. I think that's a lot of Marvel things, honestly. And you know where it's just like, uh, this could be really stupid. Like, we'll see. I'm, I'm sure people making Guardians of the Galaxy felt that way, right? And most of the time, Marvel pulls it out. But there will come a time where they won't. That's just the law of move. So I wonder how stupid it has to be for them to acknowledge that it's stupid because they have quite a, a lot of stupid things that make it to, like, final production. Yeah. Really quickly, like, what you just read reminded me. Do you guys remember when we read that they tried to put What's-Her-Face in Spider-Man as Aunt May's girlfriend? Yes. The Sony. No, they didn't turning. try. That was Marissa Tomei. Pitching yeah, that was like her suggesting Pascal it. To put herself in there. Yeah. Like that was the two of them. And, and that's like, <laughs> that's stupid, but I, that didn't make it in. So I don't know. I don't know if that's a good example. Uh, I wonder what Kevin Feige is going to do if he's a cameo. That'd be pretty interesting. Well, if they're going to break the fourth wall. I just, I, it could be good. I just want them to try something different that isn't like, here's an idea and here's like five hours of filler and then here's your generic ending where everybody is fine and nobody gets hurt and everything's okay and and then we're setting you up for the next franchise in 10 different ways at the in the last five minutes of the show mm. all um, right Moon Knight is coming up yeah mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited to see how that works out okay so let's talk about what the, we're going to do next week well, should we do Everett's game of smart ass? I don't. I don't think I've had no time okay. to do okay. it this week. All right. So, Moon Knight is coming out, right? Yeah, and I think so is Morbius very soon. We should confirm this though. Okay, so March thirtieth is Moon Knight. Well, we're not really going to review like. It. I mean, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch the yeah, episode. I'm going to try to episode. watch it. Aren't you going on vacation this week? It's not a vacation. I'm going to my cousin's wedding, but, but I'm aren't gone, you gone and, for a week. Uh, I'm gone until next Sunday. I get home on Sunday. Okay. So April 1st. That's Friday. Do you want to do Morbius or do you want to do Godfather 2? I kind of want to just see how bad Morbius is. I'm happy to do Morbius. It's shorter. It might be easier for Everett to see it whatever well, it won't isn't going to be home until sunday is he planning to watch it out there uh it, i'm not going to have enough time i don't think i'm pretty tight but yeah okay so are you not going to be there on the next podcast okay um if i can get into a late showing on on the day i come back on sunday we could probably do it that so, so let's day. wait let's establish would you rather do morbius or godfather too I would rather do Morbius because I feel like I, it could be easier for me to get in if the day I come home. Okay, so we'll do Morbius. So just watch it then, and then we'll do the podcast like if it has to be Monday or whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that works. Um, okay, none of that. So I guess we're done. This okay, week. cool. We'll be back next week with Morbius. See ya. See ya. Right. See you later. <laughs>